Good morning, Thudgers. How are we all doing? Well, I hope. Well, as well as we can do in this set of current circumstances, eh? I'll be glad to see you all again in August. I'm looking forward to it. Right. I've hit you with quite a lot of difficult stuff recently, so I thought I'd just ease back this week. Um, I'm going to do two things today. I'm just going to correct a mistake that one or two of us were making a, in the last assignments. By the way, you've been doing a cracking job in these assignments. I'm really genuinely very grateful for it. I'm just going to correct one slightly common mistake. Maybe it was me for not explaining it well enough. The second thing I want to do is I want to have a look um, at uh, our diatomic elements in a bit more detail. So let's let's fix a mistake first. <clears throat> I asked you last time to try and draw the layers of electrons in a few different elements up to 20. I did say don't go past 20. Maybe there's bears there or something, I don't know, or dragons. Or, it gets nasty. And so just stay up until 20. And so, for example, uh, I had somebody do this. They looked at lithium. Decided to choose lithium. Um, and they looked at the numbers for lithium and they went with the 7. Now, the, the numbers for lithium are 3 and 7. The small number here, the smallest of the two numbers, is always the atomic number. So, I'll write the whole word, hey, don't be lazy. Goodness me, what a muppet. Atomic number. And it tells you the protons which are equal to the electrons. Unless, of course, you lose or gain these. But we talked about that last time for making ions. And this number here, the mass number, folks, the larger one, that tells you the number of protons plus the number of neutrons added together. So that's protons plus neutrons. They can, annoyingly, some different periodic tables will swap places on these. So that's why I suggested you pay attention to the size of the number and just go with the smallest number. That's the atomic number of the two of them. One or two people had been picking seven um, and they got the wrong... They, they were thinking that was seven electrons then. They were even trying to stack them up in the layers and they were doing the stacking wonderful. Uh, um, but they were doing it with the wrong number. So please make sure you get the right one. That's okay. Very common mistake. Let's move on to what I would like to do today. Um, I did say last time that atoms, if they're going to be stable, they want to have a full outer layer of electrons. So let's pick, uh, let's pick, oh, I don't know, say fluorine at random. Um, fluorine's atomic number is 9. So fluorine's atomic number is 9, its mass number is 19, but again, we're not worrying about that just now. Um, that means it's got nine protons and nine electrons. And as an atom, of course, it's neutral. It charges nothing. However, if we looked at these layers of electrons last time, and if we were to build them up, we'd have uh, the nucleus in the centre. We'd have a layer of two electrons here, so one, two. And then you'd have a layer of seven electrons round about that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is not a happy atom. It's not a stable atom because it doesn't have a full outside layer. Can I just fix that, please? Sorry. One, two, three, four. Five. There we go. Um, now, we talked about a few different ways last time. Well, we talked about one way you could make that happy. You could add another electron onto it. Uh, that is one way. But here's another way. Um, what if we had another nearby fluorine atom, and it was also unhappy, of course. Uh, let's draw the same colour, because it's the same element. So here's another nearby, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is there a totally different way that we could join the... I say totally different to last time. We're not talking about moving electrons. We're not talking about picking them off here and putting them on here. Is there a completely different way we could bring these two atoms together and they could still have a full outside layer of electrons each? Feel free to pause the video, see if you can come up with any ways. Because I'm just about to tell you, here's a spoiler. Yeah, we can share electrons, that's what we're going to do today. How nice. So, let's stick these two atoms together. And we'll have, I'll tell you what, I'll make the electrons from here as crosses and I'll stick with circles for here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the outer layer. You can put the inner layer as well if you want, of course. You don't have to, actually, because they're not, they're already full up, the inner layers. 
um, and I'll have one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. Now check this out guys, because we're sharing a pair of electrons here. That means this atom here thinks it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is all you can fit in that layer. So this atom in here is now happy. And this one here also thinks it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great. We have joined these two atoms together, these two fluorine atoms together, so that they're both completely full in their outer layers and all totally stable. Um, so what do you call it when you join two atoms together by sharing a pair of electrons? And the answer is what we've created. You've probably heard this word, by the way. You've probably heard this word and not been quite sure on the definition of it. So if you join two atoms or more than two together by sharing electrons, then you've made a molecule. In this case, we've made a molecule of fluorine. Its formula is F, and of course, because there's two of them, F2. Oh look, it's one of the diatomics. One of the Hofbrinkel. That is why they've got to go around in pairs, because if they were individuals, they would be missing a ghost electron here to make their outer electron fill up, outer electron layer fill up. So they team up with their neighbours, they share pairs of electrons, and we have made a molecule of fluorine. Excellent. Um, can I show you one more thing? Can I show you one more thing today? Uh, let me show you a molecule that I've just finished drinking, actually. Well, not quite finished. It's mostly still there. Um, this is another molecule, water. Now, what we're going to do with water is I'm going to show you how water molecule is made up. It's made up of an oxygen atom. Now, oxygen has got the numbers 8 and 16. But again, we don't really care about that at the moment. We'll come back to that for a different task. And it's made up of hydrogen atoms, which is the numbers 1 and... Well, 1. We don't care about that either. That's not important. Atomic number 1, atomic number 8. Um, you probably already know the formula for water, H2O. What I'm going to show you today is why the formula is true. Um, so I'm going to draw an oxygen uh, atom here. It's got two electrons in the first layer. And if we do a simple bit of math, it's got eight electrons in total. We've used up two in the first layer. It's going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. It's got six electrons in its outside layer. By the way, can I give you a little spoiler? Last time... I asked you to see if you could spot. Remember you drew the periodic table for me? You did a grand job, by the way, guys. Thank you. You drew the periodic table for me and you filled in all the electron patterns, uh, electron organisations. I asked you to spot any patterns. Well, we'll come back to that at the end. Um, first of all, let's, is this atom happy? Is this atom happy? One, two, three, four, five, six, and it can have up to eight. So no, at the moment it's not stable. Let's bring in a hydrogen uh, atom. Let's bring in a hydrogen atom. So here's a hydrogen atom and it's got one little electron in its outside layer. It's not stable either. Um, this hydrogen and this oxygen are not happy but if we use the approach that we did last time, let's stick them together and share a pair of electrons. Let's do that as well. So let's bring this guy up to here and share a pair of electrons. Excellent. Now, the hydrogen now has two and because it's the first layer, that's all you can fit. So it's happy. Um, the oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's nearly there, but it's still not quite stable. So, of course, what we'll do is just bring another hydrogen in and stick it onto here. I'm not sticking these hydrogens onto random places, by the way. I'll show you a molecule of water in just a second. Um, now we're getting there. This hydrogen is also happy because it's got two. So is this one. Uh, the oxygen has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Brilliant. Happy oxygen now as well. So that is a molecule of water. Um, that's been used up. We don't need that anymore. Can I just pause the video for a second? I'll show you something. Uh, before uh, before we shut down the school, um, I managed to take what I had home one of these. We'll get a play with these when you come back in August um, to help my son with his chemistry. So it's really handy for this. Here is a molecule of water. This, by the way, is the true shape. 
That's why I did these in this sort of apparently random but isn't random organisation. There is a very precise angle between these. Um, come back in sixth year and I will tell you exactly why water is this shape. But I can give you a, sw a spoiler for fifth year chemistry. There's some really cool properties of water um, and they're all affected by its shape. It's really fascinating. The planet would be a very different place if it wasn't that shape. So, two tasks then guys. Two tasks which I will write on the piece of paper here. I'm going to ask you to do um, a bit lighter tasks this week, hopefully, so you can chill a little bit. Task number one is I would like you, please, to uh, see how I showed you the structure of fluorine molecule. I showed you the pair of electrons overlapping. I would like you to do a drawing like this, please, for all of the Hofbrinkles. So I would like seven versions of this correct for each of the Hofbrinkel. I would like you to show their outer electrons. I'd like to show you how they overlap. You can do if you like, you can do circles from one and crosses from the other, it just lets you see it a bit clearer, it's up to you. Or you can do it as all dots, it's your call. So for all the Hofbrinkles, H, O, F, B, R, I, N, C, L. I would like you to do this. I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to put two helpful hints for you. Number one, don't show inner electrons okay and this guy here and this guy here these two are well past our warning number of 20 um so is this one in fact oh no chlorine's okay sorry my apologies these two are past 20 so i'm just going to tell you right now that bromine has got seven electrons in its outside layer that's all i want you to show and so has iodine what a coincidence they are both got seven electrons on the outside layer. Mm. Where are they both on the periodic table again? Oh yes, they're both in group seven. So is fluorine in group seven. And oh look, it's got seven electrons. Wow. And oxygen, that I just showed you over here, had six initially before I topped it up to fill it up to eight. And it's in group six. So I'm actually going to pose you three tasks. Task one is to show me, like draw me, you know, the Hofbrinkles. And I would like you to overlap the electrons like I did. So overlap electrons until both atoms have a nice full outside layer. Please remember that the first layer can only take two. All the other layers can take eight as far as you're concerned. By the way, I am going to put a circle around oxygen and a circle around nitrogen because they are the tricky ones. So if you would like to do the simple ones first, do these other elements first. Leave oxygen and nitrogen to the end, you'll see what I mean. Um, I could give you a hint here, but I'd like to just see what you come up with. So that's task one. Task two um, I'd like you to look back at your periodic table that you drew for me, please. So I'd like you to look back at your periodic table and you will see one of the patterns that I was hinting at. And that pattern is in a particular group. So, for example, group five, then all the elements have got five outer electrons. That's why they are in that group. Five outer electrons. So I just like you to look back at it and make the ah I see noise. And task three is a bit of fun. See this guy here? I would like you to try and make build me a model of water. So you don't have to have these like that, by the way. You can have these squashed up against that if you want. So it's entirely your call. You don't need the little sticks. You can just squash the hydrogens right up. That's actually more like reality anyway. Um, you can squash the hydrogens right up against the oxygens. Mine are not going to stay now. No, they're not. There we go. And you can't see from my hand, so that's not very good. Hey, is it? Um, so I'd like you to build me a water, please. Build me a water molecule. That's task three. My water's falling apart. Build me a water molecule out of anything you fancy. Do you have to use these colours? No, you don't. It's anything you can find in your house, please. Take a snap of it, 
stick it on the assignment. So that's the three tasks, guys. Uh, this is the technical one. I'd like you to show me, please, the, uh, the Hofbrinkles. I'd like you to show me the electrons and show me them overlapping. A wee reminder on that, bromine and iodine have seven because they're in group seven. Don't worry about the inside layers. You can skip them. Certainly skip them for these two because otherwise you'd tie yourself in knots. You can skip them for all of them if you want. Um, I did put a circle around oxygen and a circle around nitrogen. They're tricky. Um, here's a big hint for these guys. You don't have to just share one electron. You can share more than one electron. Don't tell anybody. That's a hint. Task number two. I would like you to look back at your periodic table and see if you can spot that pattern I was talking about. Everything in group three, for example, should have three outer electrons. Uh, and task three is a bit of fun. Build me a water, please, with something from around your house. Thanks for that. Bye-bye.